Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. I'm Matthew and today we're going to be talking about the Mind Haze Double IPA by Firestone Walker. Uh, Jim F in the comments, a friend of mine from way back when, actually <laughs> really old Sunday school teacher of mine, um, suggested this. I have ha had the, the, the regular Mind Haze, but when I went to the store to find the Mind Haze again, all they had was the double and oh darn, it's a double. <laughs> so it's not exactly what Jim F was looking for, but it is for him. And if I find the regular Mind Haze again in the future, I will uh, definitely pick that up. I've had several Firestone Walkers before, including the Mind Haze. Um, I've also said before that regular IPAs aren't my super favorite. Uh, I certainly have learned to enjoy them more than I used to, especially since moving here to the Northwest and enjoying like really good, super fresh IPAs. Uh, but um, like what I consider an IP that I'll enjoy, uh, there's not a hard and fast rule. It's more is the overall tone of the drink something that I find pleasant. And I, I think that I can recognize something that's well executed. I mean, I'm just am, an amateur. <laughs> I enjoy beer for the sake of enjoying it, not, not because I have some superb grasp of what beer is and isn't and what it's supposed to be and isn't supposed to be. I'm not a, uh, you know, a beer master I, I would probably have a hard time picking out or identifying beers I even like from a lineup necessarily. Uh, a lot of my beer enjoyment is experiential. It's the situation I enjoy it in, the circumstance I enjoy it in, the environment I enjoy it in. Um, but there's general rules regarding the flavors. By and large, the, the more piney resiny bitterness isn't really so much my cup of tea. But once again, there's exceptions to all that. Um, the, so that's probably why hazy IPAs in general, which are typically more tropical and have a more, I mean, the bitterness is still there, but it's, it's not a dominant aspect, um, are, are, are beers that I enjoy more, more than, say, a, a regular IPA. Um, but all that's just <laughs> explanation. It, it, it's it's trying to explain experience uh what is art right that sort of thing um so specifically for this uh double ipa means it's going to be higher uh abv not necessarily higher bittering though that might be um i mean sticking with the branding it's double it's more so uh, this is an 8.3 percent I believe the cutoff for double is like seven and a half or eight. So this, this is just going to squeak in there as a double. Um, and that's generally going to mean they had more malt, uh, hence more sugar in the beer as it was brewing and for the yeast to convert into more alcohol in the end product. Uh, but let's open this up and give it a try. Hmm. Okay. Yep, a little bit of pine and resin in there. Now, I say that piney and resiny notes aren't necessarily my favorite, but um, of all the, like, cocktail mixing uh, um, uh, liquors out there, gin is one of my favorite, and I like a London dry gin, which is characterized by juniper, pine trees. So, <laughs> right, there's asterisks and exceptions to everything. So what I'm seeing first off is uh, it's definitely cloudy. It is not a filtered IPA. Um, so, you know, I don't even know is, I, I'd assume with the name Mind Haze, it's probably supposed to be a hazy IPA. It doesn't say hazy IPA on the, on the can besides Mind Haze, obviously. So um, I suppose this could be a hazy IPA. Um, what is a hazy IPA? So the super bitter, bitter, super typical, what you think of or what people think of when they think of the IPA, they think of a West Coast IPA. 
that's typically filtered. Um, it's going to be uh, dark straw, maybe honey color, and it's going to be an emphasis on the piney and resiny notes of bitterness, uh, astringent bitterness in the IPA. A hazy IPA, I'm not sure the history, but another name for it is a New England IPA. Um, and I'm going to have to give this caveat. I don't actually know for sure. I'm reasonably positive that is what it is. <laughs> but I'll probably look this up afterwards, and I suppose odds are I'll be proven right, but I feel like right now I'd be proven wrong. Um, I believe it's a New England IPA. Uh, typically, I'm not sure the, the, the manufacturing differences that go into creating a hazy IPA versus a regular IPA, but uh, it does result in a... Um, a hazier product, so it's, it's unfiltered, number one, uh, but also it typically has a lot more of the uh, tropical notes that you would that you would um, expect, or that's what you would expect in a hazy IPA. It's tropical, generally sweeter notes balancing the bitterness. So you'll still have those piney and resiny notes, but they will be uh, balanced with other strong flavors, or they will be uh, just simply lesser. Uh, a less a factor in the overall drink. So headwise, um, bubbles, they are a they're off white. They're they're a little bit creamy colored, which I suppose is expected. Waiting for a doorbell. Okay, no doorbell. Um, so that they're creamy colored. Uh, which I suppose is taking from the, you know, that, that straw, uh, light honey. It's almost like a whipped honey uh, color of the, the beer itself. Um, they are what you would call rocky. So there is a wide variation in the size of the bubbles. They range from very fine to a uh, quarter centimeter, three millimeters maybe. Um, so, so there's definitely, and, and the, the, the bubbles are, are evenly spread out in their size. It's not like cluster or clumped. Uh, it definitely has some viscosity to it. You can see that it doesn't fall down the glass like right away like, like a water would. And the, the ring of bubbles are, are left there around the edge. Uh, now let's see how it smells. Okay. Um, oh, there's a honey. Okay. I'm going to be saying honey a lot here. Um, <laughs> my... My dad, uh, growing up, if he was expressing frustration at usually other drivers, he would say, like his default was to say, honey, referring to the other drivers. Um, and I picked that up myself, such that I don't ever call my wife honey, except when I'm specifically joking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that has nothing to do with the honey that we're talking about here, <laughs> but uh, it just came up recently and yeah, brought up memories. Anyways, uh, so there's definitely like a, uh, a strong honey, like uh, almost an orange blossom honey. Have you ever smelled different honeys and realized or tasted different honeys? Notice that honey is produced from, from different source flowers taste differently. Uh, one of my favorite overall is orange blossom honey. It has a delicious, delicate uh, citrus note to it. It comes from orange blossoms uh, and is quite, quite unique from, say, the, you know, the, the supermarket blended honeys. Most of the honeys you get at the supermarket in order to have a consistent product, they're actually blended from various sources in order to produce something that tastes like honey. Uh, but there's there's wide differences and if you ever get a chance to taste different honeys I highly recommend you do it they're they're really interesting in that uh like beer like wine um, but being a fully natural product they taste like or reminiscent of the plant from which they were derived um, and obviously they can't it's not a hundred percent it's this honey came from hives that were in the vicinity of orange trees or a buckwheat field or etc. Uh, so you're not expecting a, you know, 100%. It's only orange blossoms guaranteed. It's just, we put the beehives we got this honey from in a field that was mostly surrounded by this type. So we'll call it this type. And it's quite delicious. Anyways, getting back to the beer. That's what.
third wild third third uh, bunny trail today <laughs> so honey uh definitely i'm gonna say this is a hazy ipa i'm just gonna say that now um because it definitely has the tropical notes the oranges the uh a little bit of pineapple uh the honey is almost a, a creamy note and my mouth is watering just smelling this it's it's a clean there's a clean note to it too it's like really um uh, something it's something 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 <laughs> to herm to burr what you call it there's also a, a grassy or herbaceous note i'd say more grass than herbs maybe almost basil no um no, it's uh, uh, what rosemary or tarragon almost. That's interesting. It's really subtle. There's just this kind of herbaceous. It's a thought. It's a whisper. <laughs> I heard a, a a judge on a cooking show recently had a really, really clear description of what was going on with the dish. He said. There's a bunch of things whispering on this plate. <laughs> I thought that was really a really clever way to describe to describe the dish. <laughs> Nothing really stand out. Now, this definitely has standout flavors, but there's some things that are whispering in it too. It smells good. It smells really good. Uh, let's uh, dive in for a sip. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Orange peel. Blueberries. Dirt, like earthiness. Um. Like you don't get the sweetness of the orange. You get the orange peel. Um. Just a kind of a uh, an acidic, tangy bite. Um. It's kind of a round sweetness. You know how blueberries, they're kind of a, a chameleon uh, taste-wise. They, they do have a distinctive flavor, but their distinctive flavor is very mild. So it, it has kind of that really soft, mild sweetness as, as a kind of a background. I'm not really enjoying it, to be honest. Um, there's there's too many different things fighting they're not really in balance and maybe that might be because i've warmed mine up a little bit now but i mean you'd expect a beer to be able to be to hold its own uh, for more than you know five minutes and cupping it in my hands i can taste the maltiness i can taste the hops and then they're kind of tied together with the tropical this fruit creamy um blueberry orange note but there's still some dissonance going on in there and and that's what i'm not really a, a fan of let's freshen this up and see if being cooler is going to help any that's a little better frankly the higher alcohol content in this is its undoing because alcohol does have its own uh, flavor obviously it brings a warmth to the drink um it kind of adds a not really sweetness but there, there's a bite the alcohol has a bite so this is an 8.3 percent so that's definitely a stiff beer quite stiff for a beer um but for some drinks the alcohol is a necessity right it's beer it has alcohol in it for some drinks uh, for for particularly good ones, when you're getting into the ranges above six percent, where alcohol actually becomes a flavor factor, you 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 you'll notice there are examples where that alcohol bite is integrated into and balanced against within the drink is integrated into and balanced against other flavors that uh, either. Uh, make it you know, it's it's a pleasing combination or it's not and in this 
it, it tastes like uh, you know the, the orange Julius I was talking about with the Samish haze. Um, it's got that similar you know creamy uh, um, orange note, but it also has this this alcohol bite to it and and those aren't a great combination it's like you know someone mixed a vodka into an orange julius uh, this lacks the sweetness of the samish haze uh, it's probably more on the dry side i don't recall very much about the just the regular mind haze um, but i would imagine that being a the same class the same family mind haze versus double mind haze um that the that the foundational flavors are going to be similar so that the real that the orange peel kind of this honey and blueberry sweetness uh and this nice creaminess but then in this they just added extra vodka to it like, like that's what i'm tasting and it just ain't my cup of tea <laughs> no it isn't my can of beer <laughs> um that's disappointing that's disappointing the Mind Haze Double IPA. Yeah. I suppose it's a thing, and some people like that, and that's great and all. For me, it, I don't know if I'll pour it out, but yeah, it's just, it's not super great. It, it doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. Anyways, this has been Mind Haze Double IPA by Firestone Walker. I'm Matthew. You've been chewing the brew, and I will catch y'all on the flip side.